Right, hello YouTube. Uh, me and John again. We've just been discussing voodoo and Hinduism. Santeria. Um, I was going to do something on Ruckman. I did it the other day. There's links in the chat there. If you want to check it out, the, the booklet that's referred to in that first article, in that first link, is linked below. Or is it the way around, anyway? Uh, yeah, voodoo. It's a Roman Catholic invention. Exactly. A mixture of Catholic, Catholic dogmas and Afro-Caribbean religion. Essentially, it's, it's the same thing. Yeah, and Santeria. Yeah. I, I haven't looked at Santeria, but I can see there's a lot of similarities. I mean, all the pagan religions have similarity anyway they will do it's all of satan isn't it so pretty much yeah here's a picture i'll show you but uh yeah because you know over in in places like haiti you know you oh what happened there john john how did he get cut off then that wasn't me yeah, Haiti, I think he was going to go on about, uh, refer to uh, the voodoo in Haiti. John, I'll just wait a minute till he comes back in. What happened there, John? Oh, his tab crashed. Yeah, I've had that before. I'm going to delete my YouTube tab because I uh, wasn't playing anything. But Yeah, I was just saying to John a couple of minutes ago before we started the stream about Ignatius Loyola, the first Jesuit who started the Jesuits. I think they used to call it the Legion of Mary or something nothing to do with the Mary of the Bible, but he actually learnt Hindu practices in India, Buddhism. That's where he got the spirit of life. Sorry, when the thing crashed or something, I don't know what happened. It's must have crashed or whatever. Yeah. It's okay, John. Yeah. Uh, I, was, I was just saying about Ignatius de Loyola going to India and learning his... It's where he got his so-called spiritual exercises from Hinduism. Yeah. Shakipan. I mentioned earlier, Benny, and you were going to show us something on Haiti, John. Yeah, I was going to, yeah, that, yeah, I was about to do that, and then the thing crashed on me. I'm like, great. So, yeah, there was a, there was that, where was that picture? It was an article, actually. Let me try to find it. Um, uh, There's actually an article on voodoo rock music, but it was, uh, or how rock music comes from voodoo. But yeah, they, it mentioned, it mentioned Roman Catholics. I'll try to find it. Uh, I think it they was. Stuff, do they? Yeah, well, the, yeah. The thing of the thing of rock music, it, it uh, heavy beat and everything comes from Buddha and, and witchcraft because uh, it's how they would invoke their their spirits and gods and whatever. But yeah, uh, where where was that part of the article? Yeah, here it is. It's funny too because they also. I'll, I'll share my screen. The article is very interesting. What they what they what they actually compare it to. Um, okay, just... those drum beats are a bit like. Hypnosis, uh, mesmerism of some sort, aren't they? Essentially, they are actually, yeah. But uh, share my screen. So it says this is an article on uh, possessed the voodoo origins and influence uh, from blues to Britain. So I was saying how a lot of the rock concerts and stuff uh, have roots in voodoo. But I'll show you what they try to, what they actually compare it the because what they do in voodoo is they have these things called the lowest spirits, and yeah. they, they will, you know call them for help or whatever but i found this kind of interesting how they what they compare it to it says voodoo possession is not a hokey demon possession of zombie movies it's a state of union with the divine achieved through drumming dancing and singing it's becoming quote filled with the holy ghost in the pentecostal christian tradition uh or attaining yogic bliss through the practice of curtain 
thing in the names of God and Harry Krishna, Harry Krishna is the name of God. But it's funny how they compare it to Pentecostal, you know, being filled with the Holy Ghost, which is obviously just devil possession. Well, they have to, yeah. but they go down and compare it to, they go down further, but I'm trying to find that part of it. But the, yeah, I find it interesting how they compare it to the, uh, the uh, what's it called? Lost my train of thought. It, 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 they compare it to the Pentecostals. I keep forgetting the name, but it says here, um, uh, further down the article, Buddha, Buddha is one of the, the type terms for it. Practitioners taken as slaves to plantations in Haiti, Cuba, and Brazil, and Jamaica were also prohibited from practicing their religion, but enslaved Buddha and priests arriving in Catholic West Indies quickly grasped similarities between their, their tradition of appealing to Loa to intercede with God and Catholics praying to saints for their for intercession. By superimposing yeah. Catholic saints over the Loa, slaves created the hybrid religions of Santa Saint worship in the Spanish islands, voodoo in Haiti, and Ken Dom, 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 Dom in Brazil. Yeah. yeah, but basically, what they're saying basically is that you know they, they would invoke these lowest spirits to intercede to God, just like how Catholics would pray to the saints to intercede for them. So they, they would say that, hey, you know, what we're doing is similar to what they're doing, so let, let's just merge two together. So you know, it's pretty much safe to see. That's it's pretty, pretty much safe. Pretty much safe that, to say that Roman Catholicism is just voodoo. Pretty Santeria, much. That word Santeria must mean which, uh, saint worship or something. It does actually mean saint worship. Yeah, but it, it's basically safe to say that Roman. Sorry about that. Cat, my cat, human. It's basically just safe to say that Roman Catholicism is just pagan voodoo religion, essentially. Oh yeah, look, I just got. I just Google Santeria and it says a fusion of Catholic practices and African folk beliefs. Yeah. Yeah. Because what they what they do is so similar because you know they, they'll invoke their spirits for intercession to God and the Catholics will invoke the saints saints uh, for intercession to their God. So it, it's basically the same thing essentially. It's just it's just Satan repackaging his, you know, you know, belief or whatever. Satan repackaging his traditions. Yeah, uh, I I found once because uh, I used to go to the prison chaplaincy at uh, a certain jail in Lancashire, and I found one of their so-called Bible Alive booklets, <coughs> and they do articles on their so-called saints. And I noticed one time <coughs> they listed Ignatius Loyola as a saint. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, literally. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the guy the guy was a, he was he was a saint, but he was a saint for the devil, not for God. Well he's not sanctified by God's word. But it, no, definitely not. That Santeria and Voodoo are the same thing, really. Essentially, yeah, but it just it's just Roman Catholicism and Voodoo merging together essentially. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's also funny too how um how how they kind of you know how over in India how you have basically three false religion three idolatrous false religions that are like kind of dominant in India you have Hinduism Islam and Catholicism and the three are, are constantly fighting with each other and they can never get along with each other you know it just shows that you know that um what's the, what's the correct way to word this, that basically you know Satan's kingdom is very divided and that it just you know they can't get along it's just it's crazy. I mean, how the Hindus and the Muslims are killing each other, and the Catholics are going after you know Hindus and Muslims or whatever. It's like they can't get along. You know, it's Satan's kingdom is is divided pretty much. Yeah, but he will bring them together when we've been called up. The, yeah. Uh, oh, what was I going to say then? I've just forgotten. I was going to come up with some, uh, say something. Um. Oh, it's okay. I'll come back to it in a minute. Yeah, but yeah, that, that's the thing too. Is that you know, you know, uh, I was saying, I was saying one time how you know w one of my kind of biggest critiques of the whole counter jihad movement is that you know some of the Christians who are part of that movement they'll they'll side with the Hindus you know against Islam when it's like you know neither side is correct. Both sides are satanic and demonic, pretty much. I mean, you know, Islam is satanic, demonic, and 
and follow it, but so was Hinduism. Hinduism, you look at the history of Hinduism and, the, and what some of their scriptures say, because I've, I've read some of the Hindu scriptures and they're pretty much just as violent as the Quran. I have an article on my website showing that basically the Hindu scriptures promote violence against non-Hindus. And, you know, yeah. so it's like really, you know, neither side is, is better than the other. I mean, both sides, both the Hindus and the Muslims are equally as, you know, violent and, and bloodthirsty pretty much. Yeah. The, uh, the one thing that annoyed me about some of these the so-called news articles, oh, the Christians were, were attacked and blah, blah, by the Hindus or the Muslims. And then when you look at who these so-called Christians were or are, you find out that they were actually Catholic in cases. Exactly, yeah. And the media purposely conflates Christianity with Roman Catholicism. Exactly. They'll, they'll say, oh, Christian persecuted. Really, the actual Christians, the, the truly sanctified Bible believers, were killed by the Roman Catholic pagans. I mean, so it's like, you know, it's not Christians being killed. All it is is just, you know, Satanists, you know, the Muslims fighting other Satanists, the Catholics, pretty much. Yeah. And it's interesting that uh, Catholicism started Islam for the yeah. right purposes, in order to conquer Jerusalem. And to do their yeah, dirty the, work, proxy for they them. backfired on them. Yeah, but not anymore because I think the Vatican have got some dirt on the uh, on Muhammad and some of his other so-called prophets. They've got the paperwork and stuff from those days. I actually believe that. They've yeah, got they've got well, they've got leverage. I mean, they must know about all the child abuse at these. Islamic mullahs have been up to, so they've got some leverage. Yeah. There. They've got a more powerful leverage because they've got these leaders. They keep visiting the Vatican, John, don't they? Yeah, and, and not to mention the fact that you know the, the the prophet of Islam, the guy who's you know who they claim started Islam, you know, did all kinds of weird. He, I mean, he married his cousin. He, I think he, I think he slept with his dead wife or whatever, and. He, you know, he married a six-year-old. I mean, the guy was a, a dirty pervert. So, you know. Well, some people would say it was a nine-year-old as if that was any better. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, like that's any better, you know. <laughs> and, yeah. and, 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 and then they'll try to say, oh, but, but it was just common in that culture back then. So that makes it better, apparently. Oh, if, if the culture accepts it, that makes it better. So I guess if American culture accepts, you know, that, then I guess it's okay now, apparently. Or if Canadian culture accepts it, I guess it's okay. Uh, no, it's wrong either way. It doesn't matter if the culture accepted it. It was still wrong, you know? They're trying to get people to accept it in America, aren't they? Yeah, they are. There, there was actually this uh, this senator over in California who was a sodomite, by the way, and he actually pushed, I think, some law that would try to lower the age of consent to 12 years old, you know? Yeah. How sick is that? I mean, well, it's only just recently. I think in the last two or three years, I'll have to double-check on it. The Vatican city-state, because it is a, a country in its own right, has only just recently, in the last couple of years, raised its uh, age of consent. The first question I'd ask is, why would they need an age of consent in a so-called, and it's obviously not holy, but a, the, the Vatican city, when they're all supposed to be celibate? Celibate priests, yeah. Yeah. And, and it's funny too, because you know, over in the Netherlands, uh, Netherlands is like I think I think uh, one of the most, I, I think it's actually one of the most like you know LGBT friendly countries in the world almost. And for a period of time, they had an aging consent of twelve years old. You know, yeah. I mean, put two put two and two together, you have you know sodomites just running rampant, and you have a lower age of consent. You know, put two and two together, it shows that you know, uh, once once they start to accept. You know, homosexuality. Then it you know it gets worse and worse and worse, and it, it, then it'll eventually lead to other perversions, pretty much. Yeah, it will degenerate you. Yeah, I mean, look at look at Greece and Rome. You know, especially Greece. I mean, that place was just you know rampant with all kinds of weird stuff. Yeah, but Rome brought all that. I mean, Rome has never changed really. It just changed its clothes and its names. The emperor kept his title, and they call him the Pontifex now, the so-called Pope. Yeah, like and and the gods, the gods return him. to the saint. Yeah. Go on, John. 
Uh, I was going to say that, and then of course the gods, the Roman gods, which, which simply just became the saints. And that, uh, you know, I think it was uh, Jupiter became Saint Peter, and Zeus became uh, God the yeah. Father. And uh, what's what's that god? God is I think Venus or whatever. I think what her name is became the Virgin Mary. So all they did was just simply yeah. change it up a little bit, pretty much. Well, Venus derives from uh, Diana of the Ephesians or something, or Astarte. Yeah. Something like that. I can't remember now. I did read Alexander Hislop's book. Uh, quite hard reading because it's absolutely crammed with information. You know, he really goes into it. Yeah. I might get the book again. I might get it. I've never owned it. I have a PDF copy of it. Yeah. I, I can't read on a laptop, John. I, I, yeah, I can't do it. I, I tried reading stuff on a laptop, but, you know, Especially without the blue light glasses, it just hurts my eyes. I just I can't do it. I, I just have to have a physical copy. Yeah. Uh, I also got I also have a copy of uh, Eric Phelps's book Vatican Assassins, and I oh, mean okay. that book is just I mean it's just filled with all kinds of information. I mean it, it's like when I read the book, I'm like, well, I haven't even finished reading it yet. But it's like no wonder it took him 20 years to write that thing. I think it's just packed with information, and sources, and everything. You know. Yeah. Well, this book I've got. Um... New Age versions. It took Gail Ripplinger six years to get that written. And that was an update wow. on what we've already done. So, yeah, these new these new so-called Bibles, the NIV, NKJV, long list, are all, uh, if you follow the do so-called doctrines and the, the, those, those books, it's leading... They're leading you to accept the Antichrist. Yeah. Uh, as well, if you like, actually read some of the modern versions, they actually, you know, I'll try to find it, but I actually have an ESV on my computer. I'll try to, they actually use the term new order a couple times. They, I, don't know, they don't, I guess they don't use an ESV, but some of the modern versions actually use the term like a new order and everything. I'll see if I can find it. I, I, I guess the ESV, I thought the ESV used it, but there are some of the modern versions refer to, you know, the body of Christ is like a new order or something like that. I forget how the whole thing works, but I'll try to find it actually. But I, I remember seeing like a video on that one time. Yeah. You see, it was be it's been hidden for quite a while because before we got all these computers and all that sort of thing. Yeah. It would be it would have been an absolutely mammoth task to compare all the different Bibles because you'd have to go through it verse by verse. Yeah, it, it's it's the uh, it's it's the new America. It's new. Amer yeah, exactly. You have to go through verse by verse, and like when you wrote when you wrote the book, you would when Eric Phelps wrote his book, you'd have to like physically read stuff. You couldn't just like you know control F and find a certain word or whatever. But uh, yeah, so Hebrews chapter nine and verse ten in the New American Bible uh, Revised Version, Hebrews or sorry, Hebrews chapter nine verse nine. It says. Uh, or so it is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 10, in the New Revised Version. It says, But only in matters of food and drink and various ritual washings, regulations concerning the flesh, imposed until the time of the new order. You know, that's the that's Hebrews 9 10 in the New American in the New American Bible, Revised Version. Yeah. I think the King James says it, uh, I'm trying to find it. the King James words it this way. Uh, but the deal, but deal only with food and drink and various washings, regulations for the body imposed until the time of reformation, not new order. So, yeah, it's kind of it's preparing you for like this kind of new world order type stuff. Yeah. It shouldn't surprise us really. Yeah. Um. Right. We. we uh, I sent you an email with a couple of screencasts of an email I sent. It seems, and it's up to them, you know, I'm not, um, when somebody in their own crew comes out with false teaching, they won't expose it for what it is. Yeah. Obviously, that's their decision. And even... One of the other brothers who used to be in live streams with me regularly, nearly every morning. 
He's still following the guy. He commented on his video. You know, wow. the, the the guy you, you mentioned who's got like on his about page. It reads like Calvinism. Yeah, it reads a lot like Calvinism on his about page. Yeah, what a mess. Yeah, yeah. So an another version that says um, "New Order" is a New English translation, the NET. Again, oh, yeah. in Hebrews nine ten, and he again in Hebrews nine ten it says they served only for matters of food and actually I'll just screen share this actually just so I can show it on screen, but uh, yeah, cool. yeah it, it, I, I remember seeing this again the, the documentary was produced by Stephen Anderson which you know, he's a false teacher but he did bring out the fact how these Bibles say things these modern Bibles well I shouldn't say Bibles these modern you know uh, satanic script you know satanic ramblings I guess. Um, say a new world order, but uh, Hebrews nine ten. This is in the uh, New English translation. Yeah. Says you know, uh, they they're not what translation, now? are they? Really? Yeah, they're, they're just perversions of of the word of God, pretty much. Uh, Hebrews nine ten. It says, and it says they served only for matters of food and drink and various ritual washings. Uh, they are the external regulations imposed until the new order came okay the king james says in that verse time of reformation not new order so it's you know preparing you for some kind of new order type thing i don't think i've ever seen the word regulations in the king james bible yeah oh, i'll show you i'll just screenshot what the king james says on this verse just so i can make sure i get the word of god um this is hebrews chapter 9 verse 10 on the king in the king james time the Sorry, this is the ESV, not the word. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I, I want to quickly make a correction. The last time I quoted that verse, I was quoting from the ESV. I had the ESV tab open. So this time I have the King James tab open. So my apologies. I was quoting from the ESV last time. I forgot to switch over the tab. So just okay, my apologies. Okay. Well, all on there. It's, it's easy enough mistake to make. No big deal. Yeah. Yeah. So, you see, I'm still a foul. I still make mistakes. I'm not, you know. But anyway, Hebrews 9, 10 and the King James this time, not the ESV. Uh, but the ESV does get it right, though. It doesn't say new order, so there's that. But uh, Hebrews 9, 10, and the King James, which stood only in meats and drinks and diverse washings and carnal ordinances imposed on them until a time of reformation, okay, not new order. So yeah. that's the big difference there. Yeah. What is that cat doing? What the heck? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, think, I think he's, like, he's trying to find like, – I got. I think he's trying to eat something. I'm going to stop him. Uh, no, go up, go up. No, 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 stop, stop, stop. Oh, well, behave. <laughs> What's he doing? <laughs> okay. Yeah. He, he was, he was like trying to eat a wrapper. Oh, right. Yeah. I'm, I'm like, like, what's that? I'm like, what's that sound? Uh, I'm like, I just see him trying. I'm like, I'm like, no, boy, stop, you know. Yeah, yeah having a cat what? is like, you know, having having a cat's almost like having a kid, almost, but a little he, different though. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, I'm I'm only how far am I through this book now? I'm I'm up, I'm up to page. Uh, this is Gail Rippling's book. I'm only 420 pages in on the New Age versions. How many pages there in total? Uh, about 730. Oh. 700, about 720 pages altogether. Seven. Wow. I mean, all the some pages that are referenced, but all the yeah up to page 707. Wow. I'm only on 420, so I've got a fair bit of reading to do yet. An absolute yeah. mess made of every doctrine you can think of, John. They, they undermine or totally destroy or keep people ignorant of in the news. Uh, I mean, I don't, I don't like that word version either. It's not a version of anything. Uh, oh, there's, there's just a version of, of saying the word of him. Destroy every doctrine you can think of, John, especially to do Jesus Christ and salvation. Yeah. And who's yeah. who Satan is, even. 
Yeah. They try and confuse people about who Satan is. They try and conflate Jesus with uh, the Antichrist or Satan or the devil. Yeah, they, they, give, they give, they give Satan that. one of Jesus' titles. Yeah. Did you see that You're service sure? that the Catholics did, John? Where they were actually doing um, a so-called service to Lucifer, saying that Lucifer is Jesus' brother. Yeah, I've seen that. That was pretty bad. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you, John. Uh, Sorry about that. Um, yeah, but this is Hebrews 9.10 in the New International Version, the NIV. Or I, I just call it the non-inspired version. That's what I call it. But it says, um, it says uh, Hebrews 9.10, uh, there are only they are only a matter of food and drink and various ceremonial washings, external regulations applying until the time of the new order. So again, they use the term new order. So, you know, that, that's why I, I call these things. I call them, you know, sometimes I call them new world order, you know, versions because they're preparing, they're paving way for, you know, Satan's new world order, the Roman Catholic Church that's creating a new world order. Obviously, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. And I know we've mentioned this before, John. Uh, I'm going to labour a point. But none of the Ed Fenninger crew, apart from Max Bauer, I think, and I haven't noticed anything he's done in the last 12 months or so, exposing Roman Catholicism, the horror of Babylon. Ed Fenninger's an ex-Catholic, you see. He, <coughs> he doesn't do anything on it. It's not like you've got to do a video on it every every other day or something. You know. True. Uh, yeah, it's okay to expose these false teachers if that's what they are. But why does it leave Catholicism out? Are, are, are most of his subscribers Catholic or something? I don't know. And also the fact of how he actually mock those who do talk about Jesuit power and Jesuit control and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And most of the time, Catholics will ignore you anyway. Yeah. Really. Yeah, there's that too. Well, as soon as you start pointing out their false teaching and whatever, their lie, they just start shoving shovels full of mud into their ears. And yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in fact, too, they'll start throwing their church fathers. And well, well, the church has historically believed this way. It's like I don't care. What does the Bible say? Okay, I could care less yeah. what, what early yeah, Christians right. have believed or what the church fathers said. You know, I don't submit to man's word. I submit to the word of God, not what man says. So, you know, yeah. right, John. So he's trip. He's doubling down or tripling down on the. Uh, and it's up to him, it's his channel, he can say what he wants. But uh, he's tripling down on this uh, skin suit stuff. Nobody that yeah. I can see anyway, nobody's uh, pulled him on it. Yeah, I mean, we've, we've contacted people saying, hey, you know, explain this to us, please, you know, explain this. And, and they just, they there's no, not a word out of them, there's no condemnation, no explanation of what he meant by saying that. You know, it's ridiculous. Well, we don't know whether any of them have emailed Brad about it, but I don't know. We can only surmise when nobody says anything, can't we? Unless and, and, they and, really then, like and then when we contact, and then when we contact him and say, "Hey, explain this to us," we either get no response or just you know, kind of dismiss it or change the subject or whatever. You know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. Oh well. <coughs> <coughs> Right. Uh, what was the other? Yeah, these new age versions. Especially that new King James version, John. Yeah, it's wicked. Because people think it's a better substitute for the King James Bible. I got told by a chaplain, I think it was Nottingham and perhaps at another jail, full Sutton I was at. They told me, oh, the New King James Version does is take out the these and thous. 
which is an absolute lie straight out the gates of hell. Exactly. Uh, I went to a, the local Baptist tabernacle thingy here because I wanted to make, well, I won't call it due diligence, but I did want to make a genuine effort to find a local fellowship where I could go to, where it would be, my conscience would be clear, you know, on the basis of my understanding of scripture and things to go there. There was a woman at the door, like ushering people in. I asked her about if they, what Bible they use. Oh, they're all using the new King James in there. Uh, and without, I didn't want to be rude. So I went all the way through the service. I didn't like the service at all because they, asked, they had this funny procedure where they had a raised like all turn then they had these two massive high back wooden chairs um the communion it was just totally as soon as the service was done with john i left i never went back wow yeah it's crazy how a lot of the you know baptists and whatever just you know they're uh, becoming apostate a lot of them yeah but they, they've accepted the new king James version rather than the King James and yet the King James Bible is actually an easier read than any other yeah <laughs> tell me about it and the, and as you know I mean I, 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 I I've seen Gail Ripplinger's videos there's actually an inbuilt dictionary in the King James Bible that you will not find in the new age versions shocker you know what i mean god yeah. even explains his own words in there it gives you the definitions yeah well here's actually a uh, good proof that this is a good proof i like to use that the new king james is satanic um this is uh first corinthians 1 18 in the new king james and look, look how it basically turns salvation to a process basically it says uh first mm -hmm. corinthians 1 18 for the message yeah. The cross is foolishness to them, to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the yeah. power of God. So instead of you're saved, you know, once and done, you're being saved, a process, basically. So yeah. it turns salvation to a process. Yeah. Like the garden peas or something. Yeah. Process garden peas. But as I say, John, I hope you will get that book, New Age Virgins. It is a large book, but I mean, you know, it doesn't take long. I mean, if I'd have kept at it, I could have had it finished by now. Wow. But I'm not in a rush, and there's so many, it's loaded with stuff. I don't know where you're going to find a decent bookshop over there, John, that would supply it for you. I might have to order it online, who knows? Yeah. I'm going to find it on it. See if I can find it on the Amazon. Yeah. It, what's the book yeah. called again? New Age Versions by Gail Ripplinger. Okay, New Age Versions. Yeah, I think I found, I think I found it. I'll show you the cover, cover image in my avatar. Uh, not avatar. Oh, well, it's pretty, pretty, pretty decent price, actually. I can get it for a pretty decent price. Yeah. Wow. wow. See, that's the other thing about this... Uh, Streamyard. I read out that word there without real. Well, I did know. Edit audio avatar. I was going to show you the cover of the book in the image. But they've, they've even got sort of Buddhist terminology in Streamyard, haven't they? They kind of do, yeah. It's weird. I mean, YouTube, right, John, when you look at it, thumbs up, thumbs down. That's the Roman way of uh, live or die, isn't it? Essentially, yeah. And then you've got subscribe, which just means underwriter. The, yeah, underwriter. And YouTube, yeah. I think, is, is owned by Jesuits. I know Twitter is. 
And it, it's funny too because the um, the uh, CEO of YouTube is uh, ethnically Jewish, so so a lot of the you know people will say the Jews run everything. They'll try to use that and say, "See, YouTube is run by the Jews." Well, again, you know, I guarantee you, the CEO of YouTube, she probably has Jesuit handlers. I guarantee you that, you know. Yeah. Well, if the Jesuits didn't want him running YouTube or whatever, it, it's a she actually. Oh, it's a she. Yeah, it's a female. Her her name is uh, let me try. I think her, her name is uh, Susan Wojcicki, I think. Wojcicki, whatever. Oh. She oh, she got a funny last name that no one can pronounce. Yeah, I'd very much like to see, not desperately, I mean, it's just curiosity, really, that stream that uh, Matthew Landau was in with certain people some months ago. I can't understand why he deleted his channel. There was no need. Yeah. Did you see that Brian Harlow video that he did? That Brian yeah, there, there was that. There was that cult archive channel that, that I guess posted this Brian Harlow video, and, and I remember I, I remember seeing that video he did like a like couple months back or whatever. That that was back when his whole um, spirit of Antichrist thing was was blowing up, and him and, and Lando I think were getting some kind of argument or whatever, and you know. But I guess I don't know. I guess the, the channel I guess posted the video. How did he get it? Because I've never seen that video of Brian Harlow's uploaded ever. Uh, I I recall seeing it. I remember, I remember clicking on it, watching Ooh. some of it. But he must Brian Harlow must have deleted the video. Oh. But but basically, what the whole argument between him and Lando was about was basically Harlow was saying that you know there, there's there's more to it than just confessing that you know Jesus is the Lord, Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, Jesus is the Son of God, and and that Lando was saying. You know, because the whole thing was like Harlow was refusing to confess it, and then that's the whole when Aaron did this whole rebuke thing. But Lando was was basically saying that you know the he was saying that basically like like anyone who's saved can confess it, and you know that kind of stuff. And that he said that even people who preach a false gospel who confess it are saved. And then Harlow he was saying Wait, there's more to it. We should we should also inspect their fruit. We just don't go by confessions. That was kind of what the whole argument was about as well. Yeah, but Brian Harlow's video which he's still got on his channel and i've managed to i have downloaded it months ago i got a transcript of it an exact transcript and the whole thing is reasoning is a mess and absolutely which, which video is which video is this uh confessions uh proof that you saved or something i can't remember the title of it yeah, I, I remember that because he was—he was, he basically—he was kind of saying that basically that that um, I think I think he was saying that the confessions can be faked or whatever, or that there's more to it than just confessing. I, I can't remember how the thing goes exactly. The thing is, John, it's written, it's in there, it's God's word. What's to argue about? No man can confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. Yeah, no, but, but the, I, I guess I guess his argument was that you know that we should inspect their fruit too. I think that was his argument. Um, well, how, if you if a new believer, someone got saved today, how much fruit would they have? But would they be able to make that confession? They probably wouldn't have any fruit. Probably not. As such, you see, you don't go up to somebody and ask them, "Oh, can you say this?" Can you repeat these words back to me or something like that? True. <coughs> oh, that, that 982, uh, what did he say now? Because I screencast his comment. Oh, what did he say now? Something totally ridiculous. Oh, I'll have to get the. I've got the. I've got it stored on me on one of my uh, memory sticks. Um. Oh, oh, it was the most uh, foolish comment. One of the most foolish comments I've ever read. But anyway, 
I wonder if we'd get it up. Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking through the comments of uh of the video. It's, I think it's called uh, "Do Confessions Prove a Person Is Saved?" And then he says, "No." But <coughs> oh man, my throat. Uh, but like some of the comments, I think you know, I'll, I'll just do a little screencast. <coughs> allergies, allergies. It's allergy season for me. Uh, no, I don't. It's just my allergy. I'm allergic to uh, ragweed and some other stuff too. It, it just this time of year, my allergies really act up. I get it for here as well. Yeah, I know I've got it somewhere. He made the most ridiculous comment. Oops. Trying to say that it was some sort of trick or something that they were playing. Or um, oh, what was it now? What yeah, it? so Brian left a comment. Uh, where he says, uh, thank you for clarifying this issue, brother Brian. Funny, because now Brian has been kicked out of the Denlinger cult. But um, thank you for clarifying this issue, brother Brian. I wasn't clear in my original Spirit of Antichrist video. I'll be making another video soon to explain my position. And he comes up with the video explaining like what he meant by the whole thing or whatever. Uh, but then, he, you know, there's, yeah. And then Brian Harlow gets kicked in the teeth because he pointed out Brian's hypocrisy. Yeah. Because Brian was actually subscribed to uh, Brian Denlinger was actually subscribed to Brian Harlow. Yeah, he actually had it on his recommended channels page or whatever. Yeah, and that something I mentioned in another stream that I did a while back, last day's maze. Tim Conan, Jeremy Carter, and. Jacob Thompson all used to be in streams with Brian, wittering and blabbering away. Then one goes and another goes. And there's only one person left. And it looks suspicious to me that um, Jacob has been playing some uh, games in the background uh, to get to get into some sort of hierarchical position somehow, you know. He's the only yeah. in with Brian. But I've noticed that they haven't done any live streams together lately as well. Which is yeah. probably interesting. Yeah, apparently my screen sharing's not working for some reason. Apparently, I guess you have to like allow me to screen share or something. I don't know how the whole thing works, but apparently, I, I was looking through the screen. Apparently, when I was screen sharing the whole time, it was not working. Oh no! Screen share it again, John. Okay. I didn't see. I do apologize. Okay. I didn't see. I've no. No okay. problem with you. There you are. Okay, there was going. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I'll just show the comments again. So apparently, apparently, I guess the whole time. Uh, screen sharing, I guess. Oh, well. Uh, never mind. But basically, uh says, this is Brian Comer. He says, thank you for clarifying the issue, Brother Brian. I wasn't clear in my original... Actually, I'm just... There we go. It's showing. Uh, I wasn't clear in my original Spirit of Antichrist challenge video. I'll be making another video soon to explain my position. So he does end up making a video on his position. Uh, yeah. But yeah, so people are kind of... This is the comments of Harlow's video on... Can do, uh, do confessions prove a person is saved? And he's saying that basically what the whole gist of the thing is that there's more to it than just saying a few words. Is also you you look at their fruit or you you know I, I think that's what the whole point of the argument was basically. Yeah, he uses a technique what I call preemption. Uh, ridiculous this, ridiculous that. In other words, what he's saying: Oh, if you believe this, you're ridiculous. Or this, this, that, and the other. You know. Um, the whole the whole, his whole reasoning is just a mess of words like ridiculous and absurd uh, I don't believe he knew what he was talking about I understand the bit about the fruit yes that's important uh, but undermining trying to undermine scripture like that it's perfectly clear in there John yeah, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll pull up the verse too. I, I remember doing a video. 
I mean, when it comes to the whole Annie Crash task, I'm the kind of person where if they've been saved a little longer, then yeah, I should start looking at their fruit. But if they're newly saved, then, you know, it's kind of hard to, at that point. But yeah, First John 4, 1 through 3, it says, Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone into the world. And for one little side note, you know, yes, we are supposed to judge people because it says try the spirits whether they are of God. How do you try spirits and try false prophets if you can't judge them? You know, just want to kick that thing where, oh, you can't judge. Um, because you're supposed to test the spirits, but um, and it's also a good verse to use against the charismatics too when they try to say, "Well, don't you know, don't question my spirit, don't tempt the spirit." Well, we're supposed to test their spirits. So, yeah. but verse two it says, "Hereby know ye the spirit of God." And hereby, if you look, I showed a video one time where the word in 1828 Webster's Dictionary said so it means hereby means by this basically. So it's saying, "By this know ye the spirit of God." Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. Yeah. Uh, verse 3, and every spirit that confesses not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist, whereof you have heard that it should come, and even now already is in the world. Then it goes down there. Uh, and then, you, you know, I'll read verse 5. It says, they are of the world, speak they of, therefore they speak they of the world, and the world heareth them. We are of God, he that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know ye the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. So it's again saying by this, you know, know ye know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error essentially and it yeah. goes on to explain god's love and everything and uh i think verse 15 says whosoever shall confess that jesus is the son of god god dwells in him and he in god and you know whole thing down there but, but ba basically those, the whole point all those go ahead. Verses you can guarantee john all those verses you can guarantee are all messed up in the new versions in one way or another the oh yeah they are in the verse out or they've they got a an evil habit of putting different words in like the word hell as i mentioned the other day they put um oh the grave instead and there's a big difference between a grave and a place of hell you know the lake of eternal fire and all that sort of thing and they just totally totally corrupt uh, sound doctrine in those I mean, anybody st reading and studying from any of those books is just going to mess themselves up, John. Yeah, uh, I'll just share my quick, quickly share my screen again. See if this thing works this time. It, 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 yeah, here we go. Let's see. Hold on. Okay, uh, so this is the uh, first John 4 in the ESV. The, English standard version, but I call it the extremely satanic version or just the extremely stupid version. Either one works. Uh, and this is, by the way, the same Bible I exposed on my website that gives, you know, Satan one of Jesus' titles. But um, this is 1 John 4 in the ESV. It says, Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For, for many false prophets have gone out into the world. And it says in verse 2, by this, uh, you know the spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. And every spirit that, that does not confess Jesus is not from God. So it says not confess Jesus, but what, what are you confessing? Okay, it doesn't even doesn't even say that. It just says does not confess Jesus. Well what 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 about Jesus are you confessing? So it messes that up too. Uh is uh yeah, not from God. This is this is the spirit of Antichrist, of the Antichrist. Which you have, which you have heard. I'm so used to reading from the King James. I can't even read this thing. It's so hard. Um, I heard what's coming, and now it is in the world already. And then, so, so the ESV totally butchers the thing. And I think it does the same thing in a Second John one seven as well. Let's try to find the Second John one seven. Yeah, it says, "For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Uh, such a tone." Such a one is the deceiver and the antichrist. Again, it's hard to read this thing, but but it does not confess the coming of Jesus Christ in the flesh. Um, Jesus Christ is coming in the flesh. He's not coming in the flesh. He is coming in the flesh. So it messes that one up too. Yeah, they change the tense or future, past, present, and whatever. Yeah. Those, also, Second John one seven. New, in those new ahead. versions are absolutely crammed with doctrines of demons essentially yeah here's here's second john 1 7 in the king james this time the word of god 
Uh, it says, for many deceivers are entered in the, into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and the antichrist. So, yeah. yeah. And that's one of the reasons, I think, you know, why I always feel uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. I know it's not about feelings. You know what I mean. Um, yeah. Talking to these so-called Christians that are using the NIV. I met a guy in where I live here. My first question usually always is, if I meet somebody who's a preacher and I end up talking to them, I ask them what Bible they're using. He's using the NIV. He's associated with Hebrew roots. Wow. And he wonders why I don't want anything to do with him, John. Well, Hebrew roots is, I mean, Hebrew roots essentially was condemned by Paul in Galatians 5. So. Yeah. And where tassels and all that sort of thing, which I did a discussion yeah. with Nine about that months ago. There's actually a verse of scripture I want to bring up that kind of relates to the whole thing. I'll just quickly share my screen again. If this, I, I guess you have to kind of allow it to share now. What was that? I'm trying to bring, trying to, they're trying to bring Christians back under the law, under the commandments. Under yeah, the it was. Con yeah, it's crazy. But um, this is a good verse that kind of really ties into the whole thing. Galatians two eleven to fourteen. Uh, this this kind of this is a good verse to really use against the Hebrew roots people who are you know so obsessed with going back to the Jewish traditions and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, and and this, there's, there's, there's good verses all throughout Galatians that are like Galatians 5 has a lot of good verses. Galatians 3 has got some good verses, but this is one I like to use. It says, but when Peter was come to Antioch, I was still actually, yeah, I'm using the King James. I want to make sure I was on the King James tab, not the ESV tab. But um, but when Peter was coming to Antioch, I was withstood him to the face because he was to be blamed. And we're going to see what he was blamed for. Verse 12 for before the certain came, sorry, before the, before, before, not good at reading on a computer, uh, for before that certain came from James, he did eat with the Gentiles, but when they were come, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing them which were of the circumcision, which are Jews, basically. Uh, verse 13, and the other Jews uh, dis dissembled likewise with him, insomuch that Barnabas was also carried away with their dis disillumination. My eyes hurt when reading on a computer. I do apologize. Verse 14. But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, If thou, being a Jew, livest after the manner of the Gentile, of Gentiles, and not as do the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as do the Jews? So, like, what's going on here is that Peter is, is basically messing up the Gentile Christians with Jewish traditions and trying to, trying to basically get them to live like Jews, and he's being blamed for that. So, you know, the Hebrews, people are doing the same thing. They're trying to mess you up with Jewish traditions of men. Yeah. And I, I do apologize. I'm just not, I'm not good at reading on a computer. My eyes hurt when I do it. My eyes get blurry and stuff. So that's when my yeah. reading wasn't that good. You've got a hard copy, King James, haven't you, John? Yeah, I do. I, sh I probably should have read from that instead. Yeah. I'm not being funny. I'm just saying all that, you know. Yeah. Well, you know, I just, you know. I guess because the screen is flickering and just, you know, my eyes just, um, it's just, you know, not good. I, I like once, once I do get those, uh, blue light glasses in the mail, they'll really be good for me. Oh, you've ordered some. Uh, I'm about to order them. I just have to wait for some, I, I just have to wait for my, uh, what was it? I don't know, lost my train of thought. I have to wait for, um, uh, the bank to get back to me or whatever, but, uh, yeah, I'm waiting, I'm waiting to get the blue light glasses because I really need those for my eyes and everything. Because you know, it's right. It's a, it's a pain. We haven't heard anything from uh, Aaron Deer in uh, the Brian Denlinger so-called Inquisitor, have we? He's done no videos lately. Well, he's deleted all of his videos. He's deleted all of his videos, and he's just—I don't know what he's doing. I mean, um, I'm just hoping and praying that this time, you know, he—he he has supposed to come out repented. I'm just hoping this time. We'll actually see it works meet for repentance according to Acts chapter. Let me try to find that verse. You know, because I like trying to use scripture to. He's you know. got Brian Denlinger playlist, so. But yeah. I have noticed that Accountable KJV, Alexander Hartley, haven't been over there commenting and giving words of so called encouragement to him. 
Yeah, just gonna share my screen. Hold on. There. There we go. So yeah, so you know, Acts twenty six twenty, but showed first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea, and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God, and do works meet for repentance. So I'm just hoping this time there'll actually be works meet for repentance this time, not just the last couple times where he repented and then there was no works that follow. Yeah. I, one of the people in the, uh, cause I don't follow Fenninger or any of them over there really at all. I mean, I have a look at some of what they're doing in a vague sort of sense. One of them was going to do, Book of Relief was going to do an expose thingy of uh, Jacob's book. Have you ever, have you had, I haven't had time, I've looked at some of it. Have you had time to look through that disgusting thing, John? I, I looked through some of it, and my biggest issue with it is him kind of sort of acting like like we need that plus the King James Bible to understand God or whatever. Um, you know, I mean, he, he may quote a lot of scripture in that book, but, you know, him saying that, oh, it's a, it's a definitive God to who God is and whatever, um, to me, it just comes off as, as basically trying to like put that to the position of the King James Bible to where we need his book plus the King James Bible and that the Bible, the King James Bible is not enough apparently. Well, um, he has done that. He's made his book actually salvific. If you look at, I think it's page 423. If you read this book so far and you don't believe, blah, blah, then you're not saved. Uh, yeah. Well, I, I guess he's trying to say that because he quotes lots of scriptures, so he's trying to make the argument that, oh, then you don't understand the scriptures, so you're lost or whatever. But to me, it just comes off very Catholic of saying that, oh, you have to believe my book or else you're lost, basically. To me, it just comes off very Catholic-like. Yeah, but if you quote from it to him, he's always got the retort that, oh, have you read the whole thing? If you haven't, you're taking it out of context, blah, blah. Yeah. You know, I mean, J JT does, you know, I, I've been saying this for a while, but, you know, I, you know, I, I don't believe, you know, first of all, he's, he's like, I think he's like, what, 21 years old. He's like not much older than I am. So, you know, I've always said that someone like him, I, I don't believe people like him should be in ministry just because of how young we are, quite frankly. But, um, but I, I think the thing is, too, what? He isn't in ministry. Yeah, but he thinks he is, but basically, um, uh, I keep on basically, but uh, basically Ryan, what, Ryan, Denlinger, yeah. Ryan Denlinger said in his video that Tim Conan uh, doing some stuff on the news, some news article, isn't a ministry. Tiny Tim getting a ministry, blah, blah, doing the news and whatever, isn't one. But Brian Denlinger won't say that to Jacob Thompson with that rubbish website he's got. Apparently, yeah. sharing the news. Massive donation button. Yeah, um, and it's funny too because um, JT does, you know, he, he expects his followers to pay for that whole thing, you know. And if they want to pay for it, that's their choice. But, like, you know, I, I, run, a, I run kind of a website too where I, I do stuff on news and it's all for free. You know, all the stuff I do is free. I don't, you know, beg for money. I don't, you know, say, oh, God, to pay me this much every single month. Um, you know, it's like I work, you know, I have a job, I earn my wage properly pretty much. But um, the thing of JT, his age, you know, I think the problem is, is that he's a young kid who, th who thinks he's qualified for ministry when he's not. And as a result of getting into ministry, he's being lifted up with pride. Um, actually, I'll find the verse on that one too. I'll just well, screen share you again. To... Oh, what was it you said about his ministry really? Recently on his video in a comment in answer to someone uh, I can prove ministry or something or oh I can't remember I forget yeah I forget what it was but um uh yeah I think I'm screen sharing aren't I yeah I am but um uh, basically you know talks about the qualifications for an overseer and you know he'll say well you know ministry and bishop is not necessarily the same thing but you know 
because they always like to use this argument when you try to show them the qualifications for a bishop they'll say well you know my ministry is to you know both saved and lost so therefore you know i'm, I'm technically not in the office of the bishop but if you look at all of their videos a lot of their videos are directed towards saved people so they are essentially acting as a bishop so you can kind of apply these rules to them but uh, verse for our first Timothy 3 6 context is about the qualifications of, of a bishop or an overseer but it says uh, not a novice lest being lifted up with pride he fall into the condemnation of the devil so you know what's going on with JT is that he's a novice he's not he's not qualified for ministry but he thinks he is and he's being lifted up with pride as a result and he's fallen into the condemnation of the devil that's basically what's going on there and he won't correct certain persons not yeah. that I would expect him to. I mean, you know, why would he only be burdened with that? I only mentioned it to him. I was polite. Uh, and others, I think I've mentioned it to a couple of the others. You know, why don't you ask where he gets this skin suit, so-called teaching from? None of them replied. Yeah, it's nothing. crazy how, how none of them will speak out against this or condemn this or say, hey, okay, we don't agree with that or whatever. Nothing, you know, total oh. silence. Are they frightened of him or has he got leverage on them or something? I, I guess they're, I guess they're worried that if you speak against another deadly or cult member, you're going to be seen as basically, you know, oh, they went out from us because they're not of us or whatever, that kind of stuff. Yeah. They'll get called a Jesuit. Yeah, like like I did, and like other people have done. Yeah, yeah. I I've hit it, and my eyes are just hurting me again. Um, right. Yeah. So anyway, uh, see you later. Okay then. All right, John. Bye. Bye. God bless you, brother. Coming in.